Well, howdy y'all, welcome back to The Social Regressive. Over the past few years, I've gotten to test a whole bunch of CMMG models. That's everything from the little Banshee AR pistols up through the Endeavors. Those are the heavy rifles that have the longer barrels uh, that are designed to hit things at longer distances with more precision. And by the way, when it comes to that precision, no joke, the, uh, the CMMG Endeavor 300 and 6.5 Creedmoor, yeah, that one is still able to hit uh, about a 0.4 MOA group uh, with that rifle. It's amazing. That's my own hand loads, of course, but uh, that's pretty fantastic for a semi-automatic rifle. But today we're gonna be stepping things back a little bit. We're gonna be taking a look at the Resolute. The Resolute is their kind of carbine configuration you can see right here. It looks like you're just kind of bog standard AR-15 uh, carbine, the kind that everybody has for defense now in their houses. Uh, you can use these for hunting. They're really just kind of portable, easy to use, really flexible. And this is not your average AR manufacturer. We're going to talk about some of the things that set CMMG apart and why I took this out into the wilderness the way that this is configured. We're going to talk about everything that's going on up here. But first off, I'd really like for you to take a look at the CMMG catalog. Uh, CMMG must have the largest variety of possible chamberings for an AR company. They're going to have all the normal ones, 223, 556. Uh, they're going to have 308 with their larger kind of AR-10 style rifles. And then they're going to have 6.5 Creedmoor like most folks have gotten into recently. But then they're going to get everything else, all kinds of mad options. Uh, like you have the roller delayed blowback models that include things like uh, 5.7 by 28, that really fast little, you know, tiny pistol cartridge that the FN uh, 5.7 was set up to shoot or the, uh, the, the Ruger 57. Um, you're going to have, you know, tiny stuff like that. You're going to have 22 long rifle, and then you're going to be getting up into some just whacking great cartridges like 458 SOCOM, and you're going to have what we have right here, 350 Legend. 350 Legend is a cartridge that I have just tested the ever-loving crap out of. Please check out the full playlist up above uh, because we have done all kinds of nutty tests with this. We have hit ballistics gel at 100 and 200 yards with some of the most popular loads available. We've tested hand loads. I've shown how to hand load the cartridge uh, so that you can take your favorite 9mm bullet and load it up. And um, we've come up with some just really good data based on that and I've come up with some pretty good hand loads. But what I did for this hunt is I took this as it was from the factory. I have not modified this at all. This is just a, you know, the regular CMMG, I think a level 300 in 350 Legend with the, uh, the muzzle brake here on the end. And yeah, just kind of took it as is out into the field and I used the cheapest hunting ammo that I could find. That's the Winchester Super X. This has a 180 grain soft point bullet and this performed really well in ballistics gel. This is one that I would be happy taking out against uh, deer, pigs, elk, even bear. This sucker is just a really hard hitting cartridge and it not only provides a good mushroom with that bullet, it expands quite a bit. It makes a big hole through um, you know, the, the vital areas of your target, but um, it provides that extra weight that carries the bullet all the way through. So you're pretty likely to get an exit wound. And that sounds like what people have been uh, saying down in the comments. You have the Deer Season XP that kind of explodes pretty uh, rapidly, gets a really big cavity in the internal organs. And then this one creates, it's not quite so explosive, but it does kind of carry that damage for a longer distance and make sure that you can make it through bone and out the other side. Uh, so yeah, really good choice and it worked really well on this deer hunt. So yeah, that's what I took. Um, but let's talk about the rifle itself and how this is configured. Come up here. When you look at my configuration, it looks like a defensive carbine, doesn't it? Well, in some ways it is because I'm intending to use this against hogs. And a hog hunt is not just an offensive hobby, it is a defensive one. You have to be ready to deal with some really nasty animals. So that's why I have uh, put things like backup iron sights on here. I wanna make sure that no matter what happens, if the scope somehow goes out on me or gets knocked off if something weird happens, then I am still in the fight. I am still ready to put those hogs in their places. 
but you know, even the scope that you see right here, the US Optics TS6X, kind of an interesting choice for hunting, right? This is probably something that would look a little bit odd to your traditional deer hunter seeing this out there. It's like I took my defensive carbine from under the bed and I'm coming out to hunt deer, which by the way works. But uh, this is actually a pretty slick optic for hunting out in the real world. Uh, this is something that has a very flexible zoom range, 1x to 6x. And this has an FFP reticle in there that allows me to deal with drops at different distances. So as long as I know what the drop is on my cartridge, I can make a hit at a very flexible range of ranges. Um, so we're looking at, you know, at, at 100 yards, this is zeroed just right. And then if I go out to 200 yards, I have to drop this. I think it's about one and a half milliradians. And then if I take a 300 yard shot with this cartridge that is not very ballistically efficient, then it's gonna be a whole four milliradians. And so it's nice to have a scope that's set up uh, to deal with that drop. You know, it just has that milliradian measurement inside the reticle, and that's gonna work really well. But then you wonder how this is gonna do on low light performance. Well, you can check out the video that I did in the past about these LPVOs at the relatively lower magnifications that they have set up, that little objective lens is actually fine. You're gonna get enough exit pupil, you're gonna be able to see even into those dusk hours. And as I was glassing around with this out in the field, it's true, it works just fine. So yeah, it looks like a defensive carbine, but yes, it is a hunting rifle. One of the extra tricks that I think more hunters should think about is the illuminated reticle that you can get on certain scopes. Uh, now I've looked at a three to nine by 40 from Bushnell and I'm gonna link to that video up here. But yes, they do have one that has an illuminated center dot that's going to take the traditional three to nine crosshair sort of scope and it's going to uh, give you an illuminated dot as well so you can make a, a really precise hit, especially as you get into the dusk hour or if the background is really messy. So it's a good option to be thinking about. The TS6X is sitting in a worn 20 MOA mount. In this case, the extra 20 MOA doesn't really help anything. We're dealing with some closer distances. If I had a more precision cartridge like 6mm arc, 6.5 Grendel, then it's good to have that extra drop so that I can hit targets at longer distances. But again, since we're kind of close up, it doesn't really matter. But this is a really nice mount. Uh, this is their X scale. It, uh, I'm gonna put the, the price tag down below, what you're typically gonna pay for one of these, but they are very well built. I've used these on several rifles with heavy recoil, light recoil, whatever. Uh, this can handle all kinds of stuff. And it has that cantilever setup to get my ocular bell in just the right spot for my length of pull. And while we're talking about length of pull, let's go ahead and talk about the rifle itself. Like I said, this is the 300 level. CMMG uh, carbine here, the, uh, the Resolute. And so this is gonna come with the rip stock. This is the stock that collapses like normal, but then if you want to deploy it really quickly, you can just pull on it. You don't have to grab any uh, special controls or anything to make it extend. You can still do it quietly by gripping back here. So that's gonna lock into position. And then it does have some little spots here at the bottom of the uh, uh, the buffer tube so you can actually set an individual stop if you want to kind of set up your own perfect length of pull then you can install a screw right there and this will stop at the appropriate position for me i'm a tall guy so i'm always extending these as far as they will possibly go and that's getting me roughly in the ballpark one thing i'd like to point out is that the butt stock here does not have any kind of recoil pad this is just a chunk of metal. I think this is just aluminum here. And so it is not very comfortable. If you have the 458 SOCOM model, it's probably gonna hit you pretty hard. I recommend that you take a look on their catalog and see if they have a pad that you can attach back there. Uh, that's not gonna feel very good at all. But moving forward, we have kind of a double-sided sling attachment. And this is for the kind of clip type. And one thing that I should point out is that this does not anywhere have one of those uh, quick detach kind of pop sockets. Uh, I really wish that this had it because I took out the wrong sling this time. Uh, I was going to put a forward socket mount on here from Grove Tech. They make really cool uh, M-Lock accessories. And yeah, I was gonna uh, pop one on there and attach somewhere back here too, but this doesn't have any of those attachments. So yeah, uh, you get the, the clip type for a single point sling. If you want to add any other kind of attachments, you'll probably have to just figure it out somehow. 
As it was, I didn't have to go very far, so the sling wasn't a big deal. I just kind of carried the rifle. Uh, one other big deal that we have up here, this is a, a larger tactical latch that works from both sides. You can grab it from either the right or the left, and as you can see, it pops out really neatly. We have these great big wings that uh, operate on gears and open the whole thing. And this is a wonderful addition if you are going to be running a scope. So you're not going to be trying to kind of dig under the scope to try to find that tiny little wing and be able to rack the slide. Uh, this is one that is very, very quick to grab. We also have ambidextrous safeties on the level 300. I think on the 200 as well, you might check on that. But uh, yes, you have left and right. And these are very positive. Uh, now, certain things about the AR are going to be loud out in the field. So make sure that you are very careful when you're flipping into the semi-automatic position, for example, that you do it very slowly. Otherwise, it's going to sound like that and it's going to scare everything off. So yeah, as a hunting rifle, the AR has some things that you really need to take into account. Also this, if you're going to send that bolt home, <laughs> The grip that comes on both the level 200 and 300, I believe, is going to be this Magpul MOE. It has more of a vertical angle to it rather than that laid back hunter style. And I like this quite a lot. I want to be able to present my trigger finger very naturally onto here with a straight pull back. That's going to get me the lightest trigger pull, the most crisp, and overall it just helps me to feel like I'm better on target. Um, but if you get one of the modern rifles, they've swapped the Magpul, and instead they've kind of created their own clone. CMMG has their own zeroed line of products, and they have a grip that looks a whole lot like this one. Has a little bit of a different grip through here, a little bit chunkier, and will probably uh, grip onto both your hand and gloves a little bit better, but it has essentially the same shape to it. CMMG rifles and pistols have different levels. You have level 100 that's going to be the simplest and has the most basic parts. But then when you, when you get up to the 200 and 300, you start getting into some better bits. So this is a Geisley two-stage trigger that felt just wonderful on this hunt. It was very easy to slowly, smoothly pull through this to make that kind of precise shot just behind, while well, I was trying to get right behind that shoulder at, uh, at 88 yards as the animal actually moved through. And this uh, really felt just very natural as I was doing that. So yes, I have checked the chamber. I've checked everything out. There's nothing in there. And let's go ahead and flip that into semi so you can see what this looks like. This is a two stage. So you're gonna have take up just a little bit. This is actually less than you're gonna get with a lot of other two stage triggers. You have just a little bit of take up you're going to feel that wall very, very crisp. I can feel, oh, there's some movement, just a little bit of movement, and then snap. So overall, I would say that the Geisley is not as crisp as the Rock River, but uh, it's still a really good option. And with gloves on, I did not feel any creep at all. Uh, this felt very natural. I've taken it down so you can see on the inside. This has some extra tricks that are going to help it to work better with 350 Legend. Everything about 350 Legend is the same as a 223 AR. It has the same bolt that you can see here. So it has the same bolt face, it has the same bolt carrier group, same buffer, all that good stuff. <laughs> Looks like I need to clean this up a little bit. Um, this is raw from the field. But uh, it does have some peculiarities about it. Remember that we're dealing with a bullet that is much wider, has a just a, a bigger diameter overall, and so its tip, which is commonly going to be pretty bluff, is probably not going to feed very well in either the M16 or the M4 feed ramps. So what CMMG has done is they have fitted an extra broad feed ramp. The barrel extension is going to have just a massive single feed ramp that goes straight up into there instead of having the two side by side that you normally get, either the M4 or the M16 uh, cutouts that are gonna help guide the bullet up into the chamber. But uh, here we have actually a cutout into the receiver as well. So they've kind of milled this out and this is going to glide extra smooth right up into the chamber. Everything about this rifle is just as it came from the factory except for one thing. I did swap all of the lubricants. So I've talked about this before. I very highly recommend that you pick up the Spartan Accuracy Systems products. Uh, these are just amazing. Uh, they have individual cleaners for copper and lead, 
one just for carbon. So if you want to be able to keep that, uh, that, that copper equilibrium in your barrel, you can do that. But then the big deal, at least make sure that you pick this stuff up, the Spartan Accuracy Oil. I have used this on semi-automatic pistols, semi-automatic rifles. It doesn't loft and spray into your eyeballs when you're shooting suppressed, especially with an AR. Um, it, it stays with the rifle, it stays a lot longer, and it works in all temperature conditions. This is Oklahoma, so we have a pretty broad variety. Uh, and I've had this out in sub-freezing weather, I've had it out in hot weather. It doesn't go away in the hot weather, it doesn't evaporate off. And then in the cold, it doesn't gum up. So yeah, very highly recommend this. I think in this case what I did is I used some of the, um, the accuracy grease instead. If we have any of the kind of rail sections that slide against each other, sometimes it makes sense to use a grease instead. And so this is what I used. And I wanted to be able to use this rifle properly no matter what happened out in the wilderness. If it got warm during the day, which it did, then it was going to work just fine. If it got cold in the mornings, and it did, then it worked fine. One other thing I really like about the Spartan Accuracy products is they don't seem to attract particulates, so you're not going to get a bunch of junk in your action. It seems to keep everything really clean and running for longer. I can go longer sessions without having to uh, re-lubricate my rifle. Moving forward from the action, we have this big long forearm that goes all the way out to the muzzle area. As you can see, it's in the same OD green uh, Cerakote color, which is an option that you can get on these, especially the higher level uh, CMMG uppers and yeah it looks really nice it blends really well into the background you can see it doesn't have a whole lot of shine to it, it has a pretty good matte finish underneath it we have a kind of middleweight barrel it's not heavy it's not super light it's not one of those R4 type it has a decent amount of meat to it comes out to that uh, 0.75 inch gas block out here and this is going to have a it's not a mid-length system, not a pistol system. This is the regular carbine length. And this does have some issues if you want to run the subsonic ammo. There is that big old 255 grain uh, Winchester load that you can get. And this one doesn't cycle it all that well. If you want to be able to cycle it, you could either do some work on your port and get an adjustable gas block. Um, but uh, there's another dude, I'm gonna put a link to his channel up here. Uh, he recommends that you get a pistol length barrel. Okay, I don't really care because the, uh, the subsonics are pretty cool, but they're kind of a parlor trick. I'm here to put some hurting on some animals. So yeah, I'm not gonna be running subsonics through this. Anything supersonic is gonna cycle in here just great as, you know, as stock. But um, yeah, if you do want the subsonics, you may have to do a uh, barrel swap or maybe uh, port this out and put a, that adjustable gas block in place. You can kind of figure out some solutions from there. But yeah, for normal ammo, everything here is fine. As we move forward, we have the CMMG muzzle brake, which is small but effective, keeps that muzzle down. And when I took the shot, I did lose it because this is, you know, a 350 Legend. It does have a little bit more recoil than your 223. So yeah, it did knock me off just a little bit, but I kept my other eye on the subject and didn't lose it or anything. But yeah, this does help to tame that recoil. Not much with 350 Legend, not a whole lot, but it's still nice to have that, especially because of that aluminum butt plate back here. The iron sights that I have, especially for hogs, these are the Ultradyne C2 sights. The C4s are incredible, allowing you to dial for distances uh, so you can be able to deal with targets at a broad variety of distances, out to 600 yards, kind of depending on your ballistics. But uh, this has two apertures. You have one at the back, and you have one at the front. Now I've done a full review on these. These are very quick to deploy, quick to get onto target, and this is a two eyes open solution. So if you are dealing especially with more dangerous game, uh, getting these into action is just brilliant. These are gonna help out a whole lot and make sure that you get those rounds uh, very neatly on target. They fold down uh, very flat as you can see, so we can easily get under the bell of a scope and they are very well built from good aluminums and a couple of very small steel parts, but these are gonna be extremely tough out in the field. I don't have to worry about these failing me. And if all else fails, I can depend on these. This Resolute Carbine is going to come with me on a whole lot of hunts in the future, especially if we're dealing with hogs and whitetails. This is something that's just it's probably the most flexible hunting rifle that I have. It's gonna be able to deal with multiple types of those heavier animals, 
It's going to provide a really good thump in a smaller package. It's just going to be more maneuverable, lightweight, and easier to flex into certain situations than you know even some of the bolt action rifles that I have. Yeah, the bolt action rifles are going to be more precise, and if I'm getting out to longer distances, I'm definitely bringing 308, 65 Creedmoor, or something like that to the fight. But when it comes to kind of practical, you know, kind of shortish distances, this little guy right here is just awesome. It's squared away just the way that I want. It has enough fore end on it. It's lightweight enough. Great trigger. Decent stock back here. And just its overall setup, it's really hard to beat. This is something that I'm going to drag out a whole lot in the future. If you're looking for that next level AR-15, or if you just need an upper to swap onto a lower that you already have, you really need to take a look at CMMG. They have that upper all squared away. They have all the bits exactly where they should be so that everything's going to feed just right and work right. And I think that you're going to be really happy with the effects that you're going to have downrange with it. Thanks a lot, you guys, for watching. Make sure that you go to the CMMG website and check out all the stuff that they have. They make a gob of, you know, not just whole rifles and uppers, but they have all these individual parts as well, like the muzzle brake. So you got to kind of check out some of the stuff that they have. Decent prices on pretty much all of it. But yeah, thank you everybody else that has made videos like these possible. We got the Patreon folks right here that uh, have, you know, paid to be able to see some of these other things in action. Uh, like, you know, some of the mounts and scopes and various items. Uh, they help to provide some of those and they help it make it easier for me to get out in the field and do a hunt to show you guys how these work. Thanks a lot, y'all, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.